Today, we have Emily Newman, uh, going to be talking about what's ahead for uh, the American Humanist Association. Uh, Emily is a educational coordinator of the American Humanist Association Center for Education. She holds a BS in psychology and creative writing, as well as an MA in professional writing from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, she's also worked for the American Ethical Union and has assisted nonprofits and small businesses with social media design, um, design of uh, web development and marketing. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Emily. Thank you for coming. Thanks for inviting me, Bill. Um, and thanks everybody for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, as he said, I'm Emily Newman, the AHA Education Coordinator. And I'm going to, there we go. Um, so the, um, the American Humanist Association, as you know, is the national uh, organization um, that you are a chapter of, and we have various local chapters and affiliates across the country. We're actually in about 46 states right now, and then also the District of Columbia, which is where I'm currently located. Um, we proudly serve as the leading progressive voice in America on behalf of humanists, atheists, agnostics, and free thinkers. And we like to add all of those terms because while, of course, a little biased, we love humanism. We think that's the best defining term. Um, we understand that our movement uh, includes uh, people who, who resonate with other terms as much or maybe a little bit more um, and we really like to, to focus more on the values and the issues that we stand on uh, together, no matter where you are on that spectrum of, um, of decided belief, disbelief in a deity. Um, it's, it's more about putting uh, our relationships with people first and uh, working together. So on that note, um, I'll share about, you know, the mission of the AHA is to advance humanism, an ethical and life-affirming philosophy free of belief in any gods and other supernatural forces. We advocate for equality for non-theistic um, people and a society guided by reason, empathy, and our growing knowledge of the world to uh, promote a worldview that encourages individuals to live informed and meaningful lives that aspire to the greater good. If you um, haven't seen it yet, or maybe haven't seen it for a while, there's a, uh, a page on our website, AmericanHumanist.org, that has some definitions of humanism. Um, they're not expected to be like the definitive one thing you can say. We encourage people to kind of form their own elevator pitch, um, especially since it's only through um, people talking about humanism more and more that we can... Uh, inform folks, help people understand the term connected to what they probably already have been thinking about. I hear that a lot in uh, connections with people of like, oh, I guess I'm a humanist. That's pretty cool that, you know, now I know that there are groups and organizations um, that uh, I can connect with. Um, there's also on the AHA Center for Education website, um, some courses that explore the history and um, foundation of humanism um, and how it has been a part of several um, continents um, uh, around the world, not just known for, you know, its background in the uh, European Enlightenment. Um, so I'll get a little bit more into the education stuff later because that's definitely, you know, my home base, uh, my department. Uh, so here's a pretty detailed graphic, um, and I apologize if the type's kind of small, you definitely don't need to be reading all of it, but to show you kind of like all of the many pieces that make up the AHA's work. So, you know, we have built and joined um, several coalitions connected to our secular work. You may be familiar with the Secular Coalition for America uh, and Humanist International. Um, we often are connected with interfaith groups in order to make sure that humanists and non-theists have a seat at the table um, and various social justice or uh, legislative um, groups so that we can kind of continue our influence on uh, some of the important issues. Uh, we have several adjunct organizations. I'll talk a, um, 
a little bit more about the human society later um, because it's connected to education. Um, But uh, I'll I'll just highlight there the Center for Free Thought Equality that includes the uh, Free Thought Equality Fund, which is um, a PAC and connects to our lobbying work. Hopefully you've heard about the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, which we helped develop um, with co-founders Jamie Raskin and Jared Huffman uh, that has grown immensely uh, and been able to provide more reason, evidence-based policy um, in our administration um, and their um, always reaching out. So if you, so, we also encourage our members to help us reach out to uh, your officials, your legislators, because uh, the more people know that their constituents are uh, humanist and care about these issues, the more seriously they'll take them. Um, and then if you are interested in running for office on any level, uh, we'd love to uh, connect you to the folks um, at Center for Free Thought Equality and see how we can um, support you. And then I will uh, jump into the publications and the programs because that's really kind of like the meat of uh, what we do. Uh, so anyone here who is a member um, or signed up for our um, messages, hopefully has seen the Humanist Magazine. Uh, that is a quarterly publication that, and we also have our articles on thehumanist.com each week. And then we consolidate the articles from the following week in our Friday email newsletter, which includes our upcoming events, links to some articles um, either about us or connected to our work in other publications, and also has a message from staff. Uh, And we're also constantly posting on social media. So I put in there the, the links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We work um, heavily in um, policy and with uh, and our legislative team uh, in January 2020 actually testified in Congress um, as the first representatives from the non-theist movement to do so in 30 years, uh, calling for the repeal of the global blasphemy laws. And it was You know, a lot of work still work still going, um, but we were able to get the resolutions adopted in the House and Senate in December uh, so we can um, continue to to work on ending blasphemy laws. We also work on a variety of uh, local and federal legislation. Uh, So most of it has recently focused on religious freedom, civil rights. uh, And then when we have our um, the Humanist Action Headquarters, I gave, again, the link there, AmericanHumanist.org slash ActionHQ, which has, uh, and you can sign up for action alerts. Uh, we've got there some letters to the editor and petitions. Um, we're also kind of looking to see um, what else needs to be added. There's always, as you know, lots going on in this country, um, for better or worse. And I uh, would love to be able to have some local group participation so uh, we can kind of keep that as active and informative um, and useful as possible. We also have a social justice uh, team that you know works with our uh, in policy directly um, and they are part of many coalitions uh, focused on social justice and broadening our engagement. We had a particular focus with uh, immigration rights recently to advocate for COVID testing, treatment, and cash payments for all, uh, regardless of immigration status. Uh, and our, our alliances worked on some grants for mutual aid and uh, held our first virtual Centering the Margin Summit for uh, LGBTQ humanists, atheists, and free thinkers. Uh, we had the um, we previously had the Centering Margins in person in DC, and we look forward to having them again in person when we can do so. But I believe that we'll have um, some additional pro- online programming um, on that for uh, the alliances as part of our conference. Um, the AHA conference will be July excuse me July twenty fourth and twenty fifth um, again virtual, um, but we'll have a platform that allows for more interaction uh, than than last year's only Zoom one. Uh, This one will have separate um, events and um, meeting and chat sessions. 
Um, oh, and then also the, the AHA board adopted some resolutions on food insecurity, income and wealth inequality, gender-based and sexual violence, and equitable taxation. Uh, you may be familiar with our legal center. They certainly have gotten a lot of attention for some of our cases, including when we went to the Supreme Court in February 2019. And our legal director and senior counsel, Monica Miller, has been putting together these Legal Tuesday videos that go on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it's a time when she can answer uh, your questions uh, of either uh, separation of church and state in general, or some or specific to our cases and other um, like establishment clause, uh, freedom um, of religion and speech um, inquiries. And if you have any church state separation violations, we invite you to report them to us at humanistlegalcenter.org. Sometimes we're able to just to do like a complaint letter or um, a warning. Um, and that is enough to kind of to make change. Other times uh, issues escalate into um, an actual court case. And um, we've, we've also supported our other secular organizations with um, um, amicus briefs so that, uh, you know, we get kind of more backing uh, on an issue. Uh, we also invite our uh, any lawyers, law student, law school students, or legal professionals to consider joining the Humanist Legal Society. Uh, and that's a network of humanist um, legal folks. When uh, we provide some some training and talks for them, and also look at it as a way to to help us um, handle more situations across the country. Uh, and as I mentioned, so I'm part of the Center for Education. We actually used to be a separate organization, the Humanist Institute, and then we merged with the AHA in 2018 and have just continued to expand all uh, our programs and our outreach to let more people know about the opportunities to learn about humanism. So we've got some online studies courses on our website, and there's um, about a dozen or so free ones that range from intro, science, psychology, law, um, spirituality. And then there are, um, I think about six now, um, paid courses that dive a little bit deeper into a, a social issue like uh, humanism and in hip hop, um, humanism and race, feminism, humanist parenting. Uh, there's several ceremony ones like marriage, end of life, memorial. Um, and we're currently working, I, I think we should be able to share it in um, the next few months. Uh, we're currently working on adding humanism and, and um, pop culture, which was written by James Croft um, at the Ethical Society of St. Louis. Uh, we also have on our website recordings from our programs. If you see on the, the right of this slide, we have Speaking of Humanism, which uh, is what used to be the monthly speaker program in our office. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we moved that, that in-person series on Zoom, similar to what you folks are doing here. Uh, and then we also, during COVID, have created the Critical Minds series, um, which allows us to hear from academics and um, artists. Um, and those have a, usually, well, we've been doing them maybe about every other month or so. Um, and then further reflection is an online uh, instructor-led course. Sometimes we've had a critical mind um, presentation that then led into a further reflection course to give like a deeper dive with the, the presenter. Um, some of the topics coming up that we've got programs on would are uh, reproductive justice. Uh, Fred Edwards is doing a course on humanism in June. Um, and then we'll have, uh, we also have a program on addressing uh, the uh, indigenous health disparities. So all of these uh, programs are live on Zoom, sometimes also on Facebook Live. And then we have the recording stored on the Center for Education website. 
Um, we also have the Humanist Studies program, which is our graduate level uh, certificate program that is often partnered with a university um, in order to allow for our course credits to help build towards a master's degree. This is uh, great for people interested in like leading a uh, nonprofit, uh, being a chaplain, um, taking on more of a strong advocate ambassador role for humanism. Um, we have, uh, so with the Humanist Society, that is an adjunct uh, organization uh, very much supported by the Center for Education. The Humanist Society endorses our celebrants, chaplains, lay leaders, and invocators. Uh, in the uh, the chat before we uh, we officially started, I mean, we heard about a memorial uh, that you know doing memorials uh, and providing the family with support during a difficult time has become um, a you know, much bigger deal lately. We've also noticed a lot of folks choosing to do Zoom memorials uh, so that not only are they able to stay safe uh, during these times, but they're able to invite folks who wouldn't normally be able to attend. Like I was supporting a memorial that included folks um, from Australia and England. And um, it was very uh, emotional for the family to be able to see them be again, uh, not knowing you know, when they would be able to, how late they would have to schedule it uh, in person to accommodate. Um, and then the, the Here for Climate initiative is our um, answer to climate change. We actually have a social media campaign now uh, called hashtag here for climate, where we are challenging people to show up uh, with their action, uh, work on having healthier life choices, both, you know, personal dietary, also our waste management um, and energy use um, help. And then also uh, advocating for more ecological uh, choices. We're kind of excited to have a new administration that takes science and climate change seriously and has already been working on uh, some much needed solutions. Uh, we did a webinar series for Here for Climate uh, that was featured in the spring 2021 magazine and also recorded uh, with videos on our website and YouTube uh, to kind of see some of the different angles of how climate change uh, impacts marginalized populations. We're working on another webinar series that would focus on the policy side. It has been a little challenging getting the scheduling. So that's, you know, kind of a push to later in the year, but we're excited um, to be working with the Center for Free Thought Equality to connect with some of their legislators and then also hear from some climate activists especially as some of the younger folks who have been really leading the movement. Um, a special thing that has come out of the Center for Education is our uh, 10 commitments of humanist living. Uh, you may have seen this wheel. It's been on our social media a lot because we've been promoting that we sell these posters and uh, we've created a workbook for children, kind of similar to the way that the scouting program would have them um, use to earn a badge. And then we also sell some iron on, sorry, <coughs> some iron on badges um, that children can earn as they kind of show that they are able to, to take on these commitments. Uh, here is a block version of the commitment. So we've got on our website uh, longer descriptions for each one so that, you know, uh, you can kind of really get into what does it mean to take this action. Uh, but we also have these short, um, strong, active, I will statements. So uh, I'll just I'll just read off of the, the top level what the 10 commitments are. Um, if you can't read the I will statements here, again, you can go to uh, humanistcommitments.org and read short and long um, and, and see the all the graphics we have. So the 10 commitments are altruism, critical thinking, empathy, environmentalism, ethical development, global awareness, humility, peace and social justice, responsibility, service and participation. Um, and we've 
worked on getting uh, these uh, commitments and the I will statements translated into several other languages so we can make them accessible uh, to more folks. So here's a detailed graphic about where the HA is headed. Uh, this is a kind of a visual of our strategic plan for the next three years. It is very uh, detailed uh, and it gets broken down even to even more steps um, internally. Um, and I'm, I, I don't know all of the, the current work or plans for this. I can mostly tell you what, what the Center for Education has been working on. Um, but to give you some excitement about where we're headed, we're working on uh, elevating the profile of humanism in society, uh, work, uh, equality for humanists alongside theists, expanding humanist involvement in social justice, community opportunities for humanists, and uh, accelerated participation by young humanists. So this is all um, as part of the organization's goals to make sure that humanism is uh, seen as a, a strong um, life stance, you know, equal to, to any traditional religion um, and uh, kind of still working on getting rid of the stigma that some folks have about the idea of being good without a God. Uh, and also just reaching out to populations who probably will identify um, similarly and be interested in what we have to offer, but maybe just don't know us yet because, you know, we haven't kind of reached their their area, either geographically or um, their interests, um, their age bracket. Um, and uh, I'm kind of excited with the, with the community opportunities. Uh, that's also going to give us some forms to strengthen our groups and the, our, the leadership of our groups, uh, kind of, you know, create a little bit more of a peer mentor system uh, so that I don't have to run all over the country uh, helping out groups as much as I do love to travel when it's safe again and, you know, love interacting with our groups. Um, it would be certainly much more productive for us all to have kind of more uh, expert uh on the ground folks able to help out their region uh, and know what the needs of, uh, of their area are. Uh, and so yeah, I'm you know, happy to, to answer questions and expand as much as I can on things. I may kind of cheat and just direct you towards a website if I don't uh, have all the answers, um, but I'll leave you with this slide. Um, hopefully you have or will explore the American Humanist Association website at AmericanHumanist.org, and uh, become a member, or uh, or still, or find a way to support. And um, we look forward to being able to connect with you. So that's my my bit. Thank you. That's yeah, my, that was that was a really interesting. I, I was wondering. What is the best way to stay apprised of the events, the online events that you spoke about? Yeah, if you're um, if you're not already a member, um, I would recommend of the AHA. I would recommend doing that. Um, you can also, you know, I think you uh, you can sign up for our uh, Friday newsletter. I think without becoming a member, uh, but there is also a one dollar only membership, uh, online only membership um, option. Uh, I just, um, so that you can get like notifications. Um, you can also, if you're comfortable with social media, you know, we'll, we put a Facebook event for each of our events. Um, and you can, you know, use that as a, a way to remind yourself. I'm working on developing a calendar um, also so that, you know, it's a little bit easier to save an event to your calendar. Um, I know for sure I can get that with Google. Uh, I'm not positive yet uh, about all of the other calendar options. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Everybody else had a, another question. I, I'm wondering, I don't know if this is something that you're, yeah, can can maybe uh, make a answer to or not, but uh, I know with, the recent 
PPP money that has been put out for the for the uh, pandemic. There's been a lot of discussion of religious organizations that were able to um, access money. You know, again, reaching separation of church and state mm-hmm. kind of uh, uh, standards. But I'm just wondering if AHA or other humanist atheist groups that you work with were also able to get, you know, funding uh, or loans or what have you, um, given the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, federal uh, assistance. Uh, yes, the AHA did receive um, the PPE loan. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how much it was. Um, I know that it was, we definitely appreciated it um, to to be able to uh, maintain our staff. Um, I think we, I know we were sharing some articles online about um, the concerns about uh, religious institutions also having access to a significant amount of those loans. I can't speak with certainty about uh, if we um, took public action in, you know, kind of speaking up against that. I know we've, well, we certainly have spoken up against um, the, uh, the, um, you know, the issue of have of religious institutions um, not following the COVID guidelines and uh, allowing for some pretty dangerous in-person events, um, both in terms of dangerous in terms of both not social distancing and capacity and, um, you know, still uh, and not covering up faces. Um, but I think that uh, that was the, knowing that there are some very religious, uh, you know, counties and and uh, officials and um, strong uh, religious leaders. There wasn't a whole lot of direct action we were able to to take to address those issues. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I don't know if you can also comment. On, I know you mentioned, you know, that things have shifted, like with so many organizations, to online and Zoom presentations and what have you. How has AHA fared as a whole? Do you think over this past year or so, positively ups and downs um, as far as membership and and uh, I don't know uh, activism. Obviously, the administration change probably is a you know, where they say har- uh, rising harbor of all boats rising to some degree. Yeah, um, so I don't have uh, membership numbers um, available to, to give you. I will say in terms of participation in events, um, it's certain we've definitely uh, increased um, because we, when we did the in the office uh, monthly speaker series, we only could fit a total of 35 people um, pretty closely. Uh, and so being able to, to, you know, go online, um, and, uh, I think we now have a capacity of about, uh, 500, um, for, for those events. Um, and, and then we talked a little bit earlier, but also having, uh, access to the recording as a way to reach more people. Um, you know, I know some folks are zoomed out, so uh, or like you know want to be uh, off their computer uh, when the weather is nice. So we have seen that the uh, that sharing the video afterwards has gotten more folks in. Um, but there's also I I'm in the American Atheist Conference this weekend, and yes, in my interactions with folks, um, people are again so hungry for interaction. Um, you know, I've been seeing. Uh, we have a local DC happy hour that we've put onto Zoom instead of meeting at a bar. And every single month, there's uh, there are a handful of new folks. And you know, I think the regulars know that it's there, so they don't necessarily come back each time. Um, but then they're excited when they do come back. Uh, so uh, you know, we um, we used to get, I'd say, maybe more like uh, fifteen to 
25 people in the bar um, for that happy hour each month on Zoom. We haven't really hit more than 15, um, but there. Um, but I think we've reached more people who uh, who may not be able to easily come to the bar. Um, the other, sorry, <clears throat> the other thing you mentioned in terms of yeah, activism. You know, certainly not being able to do the rallies and um, marches makes it a little difficult to. Uh, to, you know, measure our, our, um, events, but again, you know, we've had a lot of activity with the, uh, the online action headquarters. We did, uh, just this past week, <clears throat> we put out, sorry, <clears throat> we put out a message about the, um, Equality Act and in like five hours or so, like not even the, a full work day, we had, uh, close to 800 um, responses to it. Uh, so I, you know, I do think that there is um, hopefully some we can learn from this online focused time that we can continue on um, even as we open up more. And you will, uh, the last thing I'll say also on that is um, I believe that the 2020 annual report will be Add it online soon. Um, I know the the printed version made it to the office. Um, I haven't checked to see if we've publicized the report yet, but that'll give you some more, you know, specifics of our our progress. Yeah, I know a lot of the challenges are going to be like, even though we're post Trump era to some degree now, um, you know, the judicial um, challenges seem very high. So we'll see how. How hopefully, um, I guess the non-theist lobby, for lack of a better word, can be a part of making some positive uh, changes there. Does AHA have plans to hold their own uh, either online or in-person conference in 2021? Yes, we will. Our uh, virtual conference is July 24th and 25th. Um, we just closed the call for program proposals, so this week we'll be but kind of filtering through and forming our schedule. Um, and I think that once the schedule is a bit more sure, we will um, be able to confirm the registration. Um, and as you mentioned with the changing administration, yeah, I think one of the things we just have to keep in mind now is to not get too comfortable or hopeful. You know, we still have um, a lot of work, not only to on undo, but to progress further. And, uh, you know, one of the silver linings around the Trump administration was that it really did uh, force a lot more people to get active. You know, we saw a big increase in who was running for positions and, uh, you know, and what uh, advocacy um, popped up. And so we are kind of hoping to be able to keep that momentum uh, in order to, especially um, we've gotten already some big steps in getting the new administration to directly see and talk with uh, non-theists. And, um, and part of that is, is also due to um, the uh, some more um, consultants being available for the humanist movement. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, CBS Sunday, um, CBS News Sunday morning mm -hmm. had a information graphic that for the first time since 1937, fewer than 50% of the American population identifies with any religious organization. I know you don't have specific membership numbers, but do you get a sense that um, among the different humanist, atheist, free thought societies, there has been any kind of a significant increase? Yeah, there definitely has been um, increase. Um, we've noticed it um, on not only with membership, but also with um, you know how it's kind of talked about in the media. Um, we've noticed it as uh, you probably you may have seen the that there was also a a survey from the Center for Free Thought Equality on um, the views of 
uh, voters about voting for uh, non-theists. And we used that to you know, kind of present to our uh, legislators that like being an atheist uh, is no longer taboo. I mean, it's certainly not loved by everybody, um, but it's really the values and where and the positions on issues that are uh, most important to the constituents. And so that um, we're kind of hoping that we can, you know, uh, show up more on issues and uh, and put out our, our statements and resolutions so people really get to know like who we are and that will make them feel more comfortable identifying with us. Um, and, and also there's, I think there's still work to be done to help that, um, you know, some call it coming out, you know, or uh, identifying, um, make that more comfortable because we still have to kind of counter uh, some of the negativity that is still being fed, um, and um, and you know, kind of uh, show up with with more um, positive action. And so that's kind of actually a reminder to me. I should probably mention that uh, for April thirtieth to May 9th, we've got our the Secular Week of Action, where all of the organizations and the movement work together um, on uh, kind of trying to. Meant trying to push that action speak louder than prayer. And so, um, you know, we've, we've pushed for the National Day of Reason, which is May 6th, and then expanding on that with uh, service and advocacy and educational opportunities. Uh, so we're hoping that that's going to be kind of like the next big boom of uh, getting our communities out there and getting attention. Um, so, uh there's a, I guess, a few different types of uh, events that they're running, like critical minds and speaking of humanism, humanism and further reflection. I think. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of differences between those? Are they all the same? Or sure. Um, so, so speaking of humanism um, was. Uh, the one that was originally in the office, so probably will be the one that we most easily can turn into a hybrid um, system uh, next year. Um, and that it tends to be um, more focused on authors and activists um, that kind of uh, highlight particular humanistic issues um, and uh, you know, kind of uh, introduce the audience to the to uh, individuals' work. Um, the and those are uh, we use Zoom webinar for those um, just to be able to manage um, lots of people. Uh, and if and um, if the speaker feels comfortable, also broadcasting on Facebook Live will do that. Um, Critical Minds tends to be more um, academics and artists. Um, it's, um, we don't have a set schedule that very much kind of, you know, we don't like need to do one monthly, like the, the Speaking of Humanism, um, but we want to kind of use that as an opportunity to, uh, to expand on topics that you know we used to be able to put them into a full day seminar and now we're kind of breaking them down into uh into uh single um programs and then the further reflection uh those are do used with zoom meeting so that the students and the instructor can all see each other often there is um a reading or a video shared before so that they can kind of come to the session with a little bit of instruction and then focus um, a lot on discussion. Um, I think we've, it's kind of like a mini version um, or part of what we've done for the, the graduate level certificate humanist studies program, where there is um, a mix of instruction, discussion, um, assignments, projects, um, and, we're just starting to to kind of see what uh, trainings, you know, in person trainings that we've had, kind of, you know, put on Zoom is uh, 
is another thing we're exploring. So we used to have celebrant trainings um, across the country, um, both for currently endorsed or for kind of interested budding celebrants. We'll have our next one um, in July, kind of like leading up to the conference. And that'll be um, a chance to also just, you know, learn more about the role of a humanist celebrant Thank you. And we've got the, so I mentioned that we used to do one day, a full day seminars. We have like multiple panels and speakers. Um, those that we, um, those are on the Center for Education website under our um, open lecture series. And we look forward to being able to do that again. Um, we were supposed to have one in St. Louis last year and that's been you know, indefinitely is scheduled for the moment. Anyone else have any questions? Presentation was very well done, very thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'll also it. give a shout out. Um, you know, not only do we love for you to read um, our articles, but if uh, you're so inclined to write one, uh, that would be welcome. Um, you know, we have um, several articles published each week on thehumans.com, and I particularly love to be able to highlight the work of our groups and, um, you know, be able to, uh, to learn more about some of the issues impacting our uh, our different regions where humanists are kind of standing up. So um, yeah, you can always submit an article. And sorry, I think I, I think I overlapped with somebody a moment ago. Not at all, but where would you submit uh, an article to uh, Emily? Uh, you you can email it to editor at the humanist.org. Oh, sorry, I should check that. Um, I always forget whether it's .org or .com. Um, you know what, let's, uh, since I can't find it, um, I will just put my email in the chat and I will make sure to, to direct you to the, to the right person. I am uh, enewman at americanhumanist.org. Well, I guess we'll finish up then. Thank you so much, Emily, for uh spending your Easter Sunday with us. <laughs> and on at least here, such a beautiful day. So I think uh, everyone's going to probably go out and get a little sunshine. Sure. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you for coming. Guys.